Alright, welcome back to the shop. Uh, got a video I've been kind of wanting to make for you guys for a while. But uh, yeah, so I've got Darian's diff here. And I'm going to show you how to build an S2000 differential. And we're going to be starting with a stock one. We're going to tear it down and we're going to put an ATS carbon LSD in it. And we'll go through the build process of assembling one of those as well. So yeah, this is going to be a bit of a long one, but let's jump right in. Okay, so I already have a couple disassembled differentials here, and I've already gone ahead and disassembled and inspected this ATS diff, and here are all the components from it. So we'll go through reassembling this in a minute. I didn't film during disassembly, but you need to make sure if you're going to try and take one of these apart that you put some pressure, either using a large vise or press like this, and hold the case together before you undo those four screws, else you're going to damage something. But first, uh, I've got this unit here, courtesy of eBay, and everything on it feels really good, and it looked really good, so this is going to be a great core for us to build a, this new diff for Darien. Um, so let's get out some uh, tools and get to work. All right, got a few things ready now, got my tools out, everything's pretty basic. I think this is most of it. One thing you might not have is one of these dial indicators, but those are pretty easy to find on Amazon. And then one thing you want to do off the bat is mark these bearing caps since they need to go back on the same side. So I just put a little scribe line on here with this carbide scribe. And then same to mark uh, where these retainers, these um, tensioners are. So a little mark on there so we know to put them back at least it'll give us a starting point this is going to change but it's always good to kind of know where you're going to start so put a scribe on this side same thing boys are building some stairs should be pretty fun all right brian and obi are just about got this done so there's some background noise that's what that is but be exciting to get that done have some more storage opened up so we'll pop these locks off and we're just gonna set these out on their particular side just gonna crack these caps loose a little bit just take the tension off the uh, Bearing adjusters. Yep, feel loosen up. Okay, that's that. Now we're just gonna loosen these caps up a little bit. Okay, now these can be uh, removed safely. Again, depending on how much you're reusing, depends on how much you want to keep track of this stuff, but I think on this one, we're going to keep most of this stuff the same. Okay. This takes a 27 millimeter socket. Now what we're gonna do is gently tap the bottom of this while pulling up on the pinion. And slowly. All right. Reach in here. Grab our crush sleeve. We're not gonna need this where we're going. 
All right, next step, since we're going to change out these bearings after all, uh, is to knock out the lower bearing. So that was pretty easy. It kind of sits in the housing like this. So I just use a socket and extension, set it on there, give it a whack with the hammer. The bearing's just sitting there on top of the seal, so as soon as you knock the seal out, everything will come out. All right, so I think next up, we need to get these uh, bearing races changed out. Got a fresh set of bearings right here. So let's head over to the press. All right, got the diff in the press. And we're gonna get the smaller bearing race out first. So I've got it jigged up, should be good to go. Oh, that's coming out nice and easy. There it is. All right, the bigger bearing is a little more difficult because you can't put something up from the other side. All right, don't try this at home, but I do have this plate with a little recess in it that holds two punches at an angle. And sometimes I use this to get weird stuff out instead of using the correct tool. Perfect, good to go. This now has no bearings in it. So let's get some new bearing races, get it wiped down and we'll be good to go. All right, we got the new bearing race in there. Plus we got the old one sitting here to help push. Big chunk of steel. Let's get this in. Okay, feels nice and tight. Back it off. Hopefully we didn't get, no, nope, did not get that one stuck in there. So that's the old one. You as a tool, nice and seated. Let's flip it over. All right, got the uh, new bearing race in the bottom there, plus the old one and some press tools. We actually slide right in. All right, nice and tight. And again, hopefully, old race. Is it pressed in as well? It is not. There we go. Perfect. All right, we're going to reuse this 410, but now we need to swap out this bearing. So back to the press. All right, got the pinion held up here. Let's see if we can press this off. It's pretty tight. There it goes. All right, now catch this pinion all right while well, I have this pinion stripped down to nothing uh, it's probably a good time to dress this so let's get out the uh, little battery die grinder and we'll get this thing these edges here knocked off and just kind of round everything over the cracks on these pinions always start right here at the base so we need to get these uh, basically deburred and that'll definitely help with strength All right, now we gotta do the ring gear. All right, got the ring gear cleaned up, treated in the same way, and got the hardware cleaned up and ran these on the wire wheel. So they should be good to go. Uh, let's make some room and assemble this LSD. All right, so the most important part when we put this together is that it's well lubricated. So I've got a little bit of 75-140 here with some slip additive, and we're going to dunk everything in as we put it together and put it in the case. All right, let's just take a second to talk about drive direction on these LSDs. So. Now that we have half of it assembled, you can see half of the ramp there. So this pin in the middle is going to ride up this ramp in this direction. You can see this is basically a one-way differential. There is no ramp on the other side on the top there. So these ramps are driven off of the casing via the grooves here. So when this tries to be pushed forward by the ring gear bolted to the outside this middle pin 
connected to the spider gears is going to resist that rotation. So the case is going to go forward and the spider gear here is going to try and stay centered and that's how you can kind of figure out which direction to make sure that you have these ramps uh, incorrectly because you can install all of this backward. So bring it over to the diff housing here just to double check. So uh, you can see the pinion which goes in at the bottom is oriented so that we are standing at the back of the car right now if this was installed the diff is going to go right here so we know that this case is going to rotate forward and again that pin's going to resist the rotation and it's going to ride up the ramp so we know we have this installed the correct way so let's get this rest of this uh assembled and i'll show you how to get the screws in Okay, that's about it. So you can see we've got these little pink marks here and they line up. We are ready to put these four screws in that hold this clamp down while the ring gear is off. But in order to do that, we're gonna have to uh, compress the uh, big Belleville springs. So let's get over to the press and get this thing squished down. Okay, got everything lined up, got it on the press. Now this shouldn't take much pressure, so if you get too much resistance, you probably got stuck on something. You need to double check that everything's lining up right. A little more. Okay, and that's it. Squish down. So, let's grab the bolts, put those in, we'll be ready to rock. Alright, we got these four little countersunk screws in here. That's going to hold this together before the ring gear is bolted on. The next thing we need to do is to change out these bearings. Now, I kind of like to do these when it's assembled. It just seems to, everything's easier to hold and everything. So we'll do those now quick. And yeah, means we got to get out the uh, bearing separator, which least favorite tool in the shop. All right, got this thing uh, clamped up. Now we are going to waste this bearing pulling it off like this, but we're pulling it off to put a new one on. So no big deal. Make sure if you're doing this, don't drop your diff. That's one. Let's do the other. All right, two down. Let's clean this off. Grab some fresh ones. Always try to consider these uh, bearings and races a match set. I have put some indications on them so we don't mix it up when we go to put this together. Let's get these bearings pressed on. All right, quick tip if you're doing this. Now I used an old bearing race here to start pressing this on. But you can see I only pressed it till this is flush here, but the bearing is not all the way seated yet. So we actually gotta get something that fits basically perfectly on this old bearing. And the perfect thing that's gonna fit that is probably gonna be the old bearing. So let's grab that. All right. Quick little bit of sanding, and I was able to sand through this cage. So now we can uh, pop the race out of here and use it as our press tool. Perfect. Okay. And there we go. There we go. Now that is fully seated and because of the radius on here the old one doesn't really get stuck one side down okay probably time to get this pinion back in the case so I'm just going to reuse the original spacer since we know this one works with this ring and pinion and now we gotta get this bearing pressed on here so I'll get that done quick all right let's talk these uh, pinion sleeves so the original used a crush sleeve this one we're gonna use this solid Jay's racing sleeve that goes on there just like that and then you've got a whole bunch of shims to choose from so I got them in order here we got the 380s 90s and 40s so we'll grab this middle one is 395 and take that drop that spacer on there now each case and bearing set is going to use a slightly different spacer so what we're going to do is install this into the housing tighten it down ish uh, without the seal and see if there's any friction. All right, got it loosely set in there. 
grab your 27 mil socket and an impact gun. All right, so we got this Titan here and we definitely don't have any uh, bearing tension. So that's too big. Let's go down two sizes. I can feel a little play. We'll just tap this back out. Catch all the fun. feels nice okay so this is what I'm talking about so I can still clearly spin this easy but if I give it a flick you can see it's definitely got some nice stiction now I have a really light amount of oil on these bearings that's it okay so now that we got this the way we want we need to get the seal in here. So I'm gonna pop this flange off. And now we can install our seal. All right, got my seal driver. Again, this is actually a bearing race. This is the bearing race for the uh, side of the differential old one of course that just snaps over there then of course just grab your favorite big large object there it is All right, now this seal you just drive in until it's flush, which is why that little race works so well. And then we just gotta put this back on. Now, the torque spec. Now the torque spec on this is probably really particular when you're using that crush sleeve. Well, it's more of you tighten it until you have the right uh, amount of preload. What we're gonna do is tighten the crap out of this. So we've got that solid sleeve. Yeah, this is a lot, it takes a lot of force to turn now that it's got that seal. So that's why you have to leave the seal out to get your tension right. Okay, so the pinions cleaned up, prepped, installed, tight. What next? It's time to get this ring gear on, so I did set it on here earlier, but you'll see that I like to wait until the diff housing is prepped because what we're going to do is we're going to take these bolts, add a little red Loctite to them, put them on and tighten them a bit, and then quickly put this in the case and use the case as a holder to torque these correctly. So I'll show you that. Okay, so we quickly got the uh, ring gear bolted on and we set it in here, set our bearing caps on, lightly stugged those down just by hand basically, and then threaded in the adjusters here. Now, I always like to put the caps on first and then the adjusters. I've seen people set the adjusters in and then put the cap on, not realizing it's cross-threaded. So always put the caps on and then thread your adjusters in. But grab a torque wrench and what we're going to do is we're going to put the socket on and have it sit over top of this bolt head here and that's going to keep all this from spinning while we torque down each of these ring gear bolts which we already loosely hit with the impact so they're probably already 30 40 foot pounds 
All right, so we're torquing these up to 55 foot-pounds, which they're pretty much already there. Okay, so we're good with that. Now we can actually set these bearings. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate them in until they're even and then line them back up with those marks that we made before we took this apart. Okay, so it's probably hard to see. There's a scratch right here. That lines up so we know this is the correct uh, bearing cap for this side of the dip. Let's rotate this a little closer. All right, let's see on this side. We've got the line there, which needs to line up with these scratches here. And then we've got our lines here, showing that this is the right bearing cap. So let's spin that over until it lines up. All right, so we actually got a line right here that we made. So that lines up, this lines up, and on the other side, these line up. Now, this will make a distinct kind of noise. You can hear what that backlash sounds like. Now, when you do these a lot, you'll start to develop kind of a feel and sense for what that's supposed to sound like. The tone changes as you get more and less backlash. Based on that noise, I'm going to go with uh, it sounds pretty tight, so maybe four thousandths. So let's get out the indicator and check it out. All right, I got the indicator on here. Just sitting against the tooth there, so we'll be able to see movement. Now, the next thing we got to do is, what I want to do is hold this really firm while I move the ring gear. I want to make sure that I know that the pinion's not moving. So let's get a punch out. Got my punch, and... There's kind of an extra hole here on these flanges, one that's not used, it's not threaded. So you can drop your punch in there and then rotate the pinion until it's tight into the corner. And now if I just hold tension on that, the pinion will stay locked in place and we can move the ring gear. Okay, so let's see what we got here. All right, that's a pretty good reading there. So we're looking at about four thousandths. All right, so let's check it in a different position. So now this is a four to one ring and pinion. So if I take my punch out, rotate it one turn, we'll be just about a quarter of the ring gear different. Okay, let's check it here. Only getting about three thou there. Definitely a little tight. All right, so let's go one more turn. That'll get us the other side from where we started, basically. And about three and a half. All right, so we need to loosen this up. Okay, so I'm gonna basically, let's see, so we need to take the ring and pinion and move it that way just a little bit. So we'll take this adjuster, move it counterclockwise, one hole, and we'll tighten up the other one one hole. Let's try that. Okay, so we're closer to seven now. That's a little big of a gap. So we're gonna want to bring the ring gear uh, back this way a little bit and take some of that out, but we only have that one hole of adjustment. We need to get between that. Now, the other thing we need to set here is the bearing preload. And how they ask you to do it in the manual is to basically like, you, know, you have to get, I guess, the right amount of lubricant and everything, and then pull on the ring gear and tighten these until there's the correct amount of resistance of rotation. I found that pretty difficult to do, especially with once you get the pinion seal in and everything, which often they're already in, if you haven't removed your pinion. So what I like to do is I like to then, once I get it very close, I'll back an adjuster off until it's loose. 
and I'll rotate it clockwise until I feel it touch the race. And when it touches the bearing race, I then want to move it two notches. And that's about the right amount of tension. Um, so what we could do in this situation, if I were right now, if I were to back this off one notch, this preload adjuster would then be loose. And I of course want two notches. So what we're gonna do is leave this side where it is and we're gonna tension this side one more notch. And that's also going to then take the pinion and push it that way a little bit while increasing our preload. Hopefully that's gonna get us the number we're looking for. All right, got that bearing tensioned up a little further. Hold the pinion nice and firm. Yep, that's looking pretty good. Let me uh, rotate this dial so it's easy to tell what we're looking at here. So that's zero, that's six. And that's a little exaggerated. So that's zero, that's five. Zero, five, negative one. Nope, always tough to hold everything just right. So here you go, it's about five and a half right now. So that's perfect. So, great, so we've got five and a half thou of backlash on the ring of pinion. We've got good bearing tension. Uh, we've got our solid sleeve installed. There is one more trick. So we haven't discussed yet is actually torquing down these bearing cap bolts. And these bearing cap bolts, we're gonna wanna change out because these are a grade, I believe these are eight eights. And we wanna bump that up, uh, up all the way up to 12 nines. So I'll show you what those look like. Okay, well, it's about a day late on these bolts showing up, which is why we started the assembly without them. But this is the bolt provided by Honda. It's an 8.8. And this is what I'll be using. This is a 12.9 socket head with a hardened washer. And it's also five millimeters longer. So we're gonna use a little more of that available thread that's already in these casings. So I already got two of them in here installed. I did back the tension off to do this, of course. And again, I will retension it back to where it was. And yeah, let me get these other uh, ones knocked out. And then we're going to paint the gears and double check to make sure everything's perfect. All right, so we got everything tightened back down again. Uh, I've got a little bit of Persian blue paint on here. So we're going to spin this thing around and make sure we push the diff up against both the drive and decel side of the gears so we'll give it a few turns in each direction and we'll get a pretty good idea of what the pattern looks like now since this is the ring and pinion out of this differential everything should look great uh, I've yet to come across one of these OES 2000 ring and pinion sets that are not great from the factory um, they all seem to vary in how much preloads on the pinion when I get them all right, well, tough to get a good look on camera of the print on the gears, but everything is looking pretty good. Just wanted to double check the outside runout on this ring gear, but it looks spot on. Uh, since this diff, um, since this LSD housing uh, came out of a diff that blew up, I just want to make sure nothing got tweaked, but everything looks great. We still have five thou-ish of backlash. So the last thing I'm going to do is I want to, because I have a washer under here, I want to put a little Loctite on these and then we're going to torque them up. And we're going to torque them quite a bit past what the factory is. The factory is at sort of 33 foot pounds. We're going to go up to like 47 ish. And we're going to do is use a digital torque wrench. All right, got a torque wrench fired up here. This thing only gets used once a year probably. So we'll go up, there's the factory, still getting quickly a lot tighter, a lot tighter, and starting to feel a little soft right there. So 45 it is. All right, so we'll do 45. It's always around there, depends how I prepped the threads. Yep. Okay, so 45 it is. That one felt a little better, so I went a little further. Yep, 
and so did that one. All right. Even with these bolts tight, these adjusters can spin. And I've actually seen people, <laughs> this idiot, leave the lock off and one of the adjusters came loose. So don't do that. Make sure you put the locks on here. So we'll get those on. Okay, so got the locks on. Everything is complete. Everything checks out. Really excited about this diff. Hopefully this will carry Darien's BSP car to a national championship. And uh, I'll put some silicone and we'll get this wrapped up. Anyway, thanks for coming along on the, this journey. Um, I hope some of you uh, learned something and hopefully this thing is a solid unit. I've probably put together 50 S2000 diffs over the years and so far I've had pretty good luck with this method. So any questions, leave a comment and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, that's it for this one. Feel free to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.